Good morning and a happy winter solstice to you all. That's right, it is the 22nd of December 2019 and it is the shortest day of the year. The point at which everything changes, it's the shortest day, the night will be really long but at the end of the end of the long night the sun will rise again, life will be reborn, our crops will prosper in the new year and life will return to the planet. It's a really important celebration, the pagan festival of Yule in fact. Sunrise this morning was at about 20 past 4 when the sun the sun and the North Pole were at their furthest away from each other, obviously the Northern Hemisphere it dips this way and that way. The winter solstice occurs when the sun is at its furthest ever point from the North Pole. Usually this happens on the 21st, 22nd of December, but can actually happen any time between the 20th and the 23rd, although solstice on the 23rd is very, very rare. The word solstice itself comes from the Latin solistium, which essentially means sun standing still. The ancient peoples thought the sun travelled across the sky to the point of the winter solstice, paused there on the shortest day, and then headed back in order to pause at the other end for the summer solstice. So this morning many people will flock down to Stonehenge, which is of course the UK's most famous prehistoric stone circle and symbol of the solstice. Many, many people head down there to celebrate it. Stonehenge is lined up with the sunset an interesting one. The other two monuments in Britain are lined up with the sunrise, but I'll get to those later. Stonehenge, I'll be honest, as archaeologists we're not 100% certain what it was for, but it's clear that the passage of the sun across the sky on solstice day lines up with the heel stone, the altar stone and the slaughter stone following the sun across the sky. That incidentally is one of the puzzles in my first book, The Mystery of St. Arendites. My team have to figure out what's going on and sort out the winter solstice. The other two sites that we have are both Neolithic chambered tombs, so these are not places where you'd have a massive gathering necessarily, although you may well have done, we're a bit, uh, a bit unsure about how prehistoric rituals work. But Newgrange tomb in Ireland is a line to face the sunrise, and on the solstice day, the 21st, the 22nd, the sun rises and can fill the chambers of the tomb for about 17 minutes. It is a fantastic place to go and see the sunrise, however, of all the thousands and thousands of people who apply to go every year, only 60 people can go into the tomb. It's a really difficult one to get to, but if you can, probably totally worth it. I've never been lucky enough to get there. There's one final really interesting monument to point out in Europe, which is the Gossek Circle in Germany. This one is a stone circle, similar to Stonehenge, yet its alignment sits with both the sunrise and the sunset, so the entire circle lines up with the whole winter solstice day. The sun rising between two stone pillars, crossing over the circle, and descending again between two other stone pillars. It's a magnificent work of human understanding of the solar earth movements. So we've looked at what the solstice is and we've looked at where the ancients celebrated it. What did they do? Well, the solstice heralds the beginning of the winter months. It's the coming of winter, the coming of the hard weather, the crops aren't likely to work, and people generally starved at the beginning of a new year in the winter. So what they did is they come together, they slaughter all their cattle so that they don't have to feed them over the winter, it saves food for humans. This also means that there is a plentiful supply of meat for people to eat at this time of year. And even more importantly, the wine and the beer that's been fermenting for most of the year, well, that's ready for drinking now, so we can have a feast. Feasting, drinking, celebrating life and the return of life to Earth. It's a brilliant thing. Excavations two miles away from Stonehenge at Durrington Walls have confirmed to archaeologists that feasting happened at this time of year. People repeatedly came back to the same spot to celebrate the solstice and feast on their slaughtered cattle and their finely brewed beer. So, while well, it's Christmas and this is what we're all doing anyway, let's get on with that prehistoric spirit, have ourselves some lovely steak dinners and get the beer on. Okay, so solstice celebrations, fairly similar to Christmas. Beer, meat, all the fun that you can have. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like and follow my page, and a happy Christmas, yo Saturnalia, and happy solstice to all.